I am at the park walking my dog. It's currently a quarter to eight. It is the 1st of November and it is the day that I need to go in into my doctor's office to collect my IVF medication. I'm so excited. I barely slept last night. I kept waking up. I was having those weird dreams. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video. I cannot tell you. I've been so much looking forward to shoot this video and finally today is here. Um, yeah, I have been really excited in general recently. Um, yeah, so... So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Dani and I'm living with a chronic condition that is called, uh, called hydrocephalus. So on my channel, I um, post videos about living with hydrocephalus, what it's like and how to make life more manageable. And currently, because I'm going through IVF, I am posting my journey, my IVF journey while having hydrocephalus. And hopefully this will be very useful uh, for you guys. So if you like this video, please press the thumbs up button please, so that I know that you like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. This will mean a lot to me and will mean that you enjoy the content that I'm making. Without any further ado, let's jump into today's update on my IVF journey video. So in this video, I'll be talking to you about my journey so far and about everything medication related. So first of all, let me tell you that today, as Thursday, like as of today, I am on my cycle day 13 and on my 11th day of medications. And I can definitely tell you that IVF is not an easy process. It requires a lot of flexibility and, you know, a lot of adjustments to be made on the way and on the go. This is something that I have learned through my experience so far as well, because since my last video from last week until today, I've had three ultrascans like i've had three appointments for three ultrascans and three blood rolls sorry not three two blood rolls so basically this is something that is requiring a lot of time and a lot of uh, very good time management skills which i do not have so <laughs> this is something that has been quite a challenge but i'm learning on the go and i'm so so excited to be on this journey so as of today as of uh, my 11th day of medication i am taking a menu pure and uh Ganorelix or the trade name that I am using is called Orgalotran but it, that is basically Ganorelix. I'm taking those two shots, I'm taking them in my tummy at night time and um, this is something that I've been you know taking injections in my tummy at night time is something that I've been doing consistently for the past 11 days which only shows me how much we can endure and how much you know I am capable of actually you know giving myself a shot in the tummy every night. My initial medication, my initial prescription was not uh, for the Manipur and uh, Ganorelix shots. On my first appointment and scan last Monday, I was distributed a um, uh, Benfola shot. The Benfola shot is uh, something that I was taking, I was administering to myself every night uh, in, my, in the skin of my tummy again. The skin of my tummy has taken a lot recently. Um, so I had been doing that, that shot, the Benfola shot, every night for four nights. And then last Friday on my second appointment, and on my first actual ultrasound scan that checked the progress of my follicles, my doctor prescribed me a Ganorelic shot from day five of medications on as well. And then on my next appointment this Monday, so that would have been, that was day seven of medications, no, day eight of medications, my doctor changed my menfola to an um, Menopure injection. So I have been taking Benfola for seven days, um, Orgalotran for six days so far, and I switched from Benfola to Menopure from Monday on. Here it is. So this is Benfola, which is essentially the same as Gono F for the US and for some other regions. Basically inside, there is a syringe which is pre-filled with the medication it's right here and then you have this here which is the alcohol swap which is for before for to sanitize the area before and after you have injected the uh, benfola on the injection site on your tummy 
basically this is the pre-filled syringe so tonight i need to uh take this at precisely 9 p.m this uh, tonight and i will show you how i'm administering this and this here is the needle which i'm very happy about because it is just such a tiny whiny needle it should go into my tummy and it's just the tiniest and sweetest needle in the world so i will show you guys how i am um applying this So basically, the Benfola and the Menopure shots both do the same thing. They make your um, ovaries grow multiple follicles and hopefully mature multiple eggs in those multiple follicles as well, uh, which is the goal, which is the point, which is what we're doing this all for, so that those eggs can then be retrieved and can be fertilized on egg retrieval day. And then the Ganorelic shot uh, stops you from ovulating those follicles because you don't want to ovulate. You want all of those follicles to be retrieved to be extracted upon egg retrieval day so that they can be then fertilized in the lab and Ganorelix actually stops ovulation. So it's really interesting because last because yesterday when I went on my last scan I took a blood draw and the LH which is basically the hormone that triggers ovulation um, at this point in my cycle should have been somewhere you know of course not urging yet but should be somewhere and yesterday i was at 0, 0.0 0, 0 0.0 of lh which means that there is no chance of ovulating anytime soon basically so as i as i said i'm taking now i'm taking currently two shots in my tummy every night and there has been quite some bruising from them i'm not sure if you can guys see the bruises so this is basically where the injection sites are i know that some of those mean that i have probably hit the capillary when i was administering the drug and i am so bloated oh my god it hurts um but yeah basically these are mainly from the ganorelic shot they do bruise me a lot and I think that this one is a, a menopure bite. So yeah, as you can see, generally it has not been that bad, but the Ganorelix did bruise me. And basically the menopure is a little bit more difficult to actually mix and administer. It's not that complicated, but the first time I was just like, thought that I was going to fail.
So side effects wise, things have been pretty good. I have not experienced any major side effects or anything. So today is day 11 of meds and there is some serious bloating going on. It is pretty bad today. There is quite a bit of a bloating as you can see, but it has not been bothering me that much. We are still inside and in home, working from home, doing everything from home most of the time. So wearing yoga pants and tracksuit bottoms is nothing that worries me at present. So I am just, you know, getting comfy, not wearing anything that presses on my tummy and I'm quite okay with that. And another side effect that I was experiencing specifically from the Benfola was some really bad acne, like my forehead was all covered in acne and my um, chin as well. It was covered in just some, you know, cyst cystic acne. And I think that it, I am 100% sure that it was from the Benfola shot because once that I switched to Menopure, that acne disappeared and I have had no problem so far. Otherwise, I have generally been really happy and full of energy. And yeah, me waking up at 5 a.m. every morning without an alarm clock, I believe is more related to anxiety and to the excitement of the whole process. And I'm not attributing it to, you know, anything from the meds. Today, however, is the first day that I'm really kind of feeling it. I am feeling really bloated today. <laughs> like today is the first day that I really do feel bloaty and it actually hurts when I'm touching my tummy and it's really hard on my lower tummy uh, but and also I feel really tired today is the first day that I really do feel tired but to, as mentioned today is day 11 of medication and day 13 of my cycle so I believe that this is as bad as it can get so I, I'm not expecting anything more than that to happen Tomorrow is hopefully going to be my last day of stimulation medications and then tomorrow is my next appointment where I'm going to get a blood draw and I'm going to get an ultrasound of my ovaries and we are going to confirm when I should be taking a trigger shot and actually getting an egg retrieval. I also need to pee all the time because my ovaries, because they're so enlarged, are like pressing on my bladder and it's just... <sighs> and because I need to pee so much, I'm always thirsty as well but that's it so no major issues basically now that i am so far along in the stimulation process so as mentioned today is day 11 of meds and tomorrow is going to be my final day of medication hopefully so that's going to be day 12. Uh, now that i am this far along um, i cannot really exercise um i cannot really work out and i shouldn't have intercourse and there is a reason behind both of those restrictions. Basically, the reason for the intercourse is that because I do have so many eggs that are maturing currently uh, inside of my ovaries, if I ovulate by any chance, if there is any chance that I ovulate, that puts me in a huge, huge risk of um, ectopic or multiple pregnancy, which is a risk on itself. So basically I cannot have intercourse until I'm being cleared by my doctor. So until after egg retrieval day. And about working out, generally this far along into the stimulation process, it is not recommended uh, for women to be working out. And in my case specifically, because for someone who does not have hydrocephalus, the um, ovaries, even though they are really enlarged and are full of eggs and full of blood currently in order to support the growth of those eggs, the um, ovaries are generally lying in the abdominal cavity, uh, snug with some fat tissue or some just abdominal tissue around them to keep them safe and secure. However, in my case, because I do have hydrocephalus and I have quite a huge amount of liquid constantly in my tummy, like 300, 400, sometimes 500 ml of liquid, I my ovaries are actually floating in that liquid. And now that they're so enlarged, there is an actual risk of them getting twisted around the fallopian tubes, uh, which is a complication. So basically, I shouldn't be uh, burning, I shouldn't be working out, I shouldn't be doing anything strainful, and I shouldn't be having sex. So hopefully, finally, I should be triggered this Saturday and then on Monday should be egg retrieval day. How exciting is this? Seriously, I'm so excited. It is just beyond words. 
Hopefully we should be able to get some really nice eggs from my egg retrieval. So yesterday on day nine, on my day 10 ultrasound, which was yesterday, we did see that I had seven uh, follicles growing in my left ovary and six or seven in my right one. So hopefully we should be able to retrieve some nice good eggies. All of them are now above 14 millimeters and there are uh, three or four that are 17 millimeters or above and we're just waiting for them to grow a little further uh, so that, that they can be retrieved. So this amount, about 13, follicu 13, 14 follicles is a pretty good amount but nothing is really certain until egg retrieval day and even post egg retrieval day once that the eggs are being are fertilized and are uh, being monitored if they develop into embryos and then blastocysts and i'm trying to be realistic and not to get too excited but guys come on it's so hard not to be excited after all that we've been through so far so yes i'm going through another scan and another blood draw tomorrow and tomorrow i will know for sure if my egg retrieval will be on monday keep your fingers crossed emotionally it has been an emotional roller coaster i am generally in a good mood and i am trying to be optimistic and happy all the time and hopeful but of course, there are some days where I'm just really down with the blues. I don't know whether this will work or not. And those days are really hard. So anyways, as mentioned, tomorrow is a big day. Tomorrow is the day that I will finally know my actual egg, egg retrieval date and I will be dispensed the trigger shot. And then um, hopefully on my next video, I'll be able to give you guys some more updates on how the egg retrieval went, if everything was okay there, how many eggs we were able to retrieve, if they fertilized or not. And hopefully, I'm really hopeful to be able to give you an update on an embryo transfer date as well. And then this weekend, I hope to have a really nice and relaxing time um, with my husband. This is going to be the first weekend in a very long time that I do not have any university stuff or any psychology workshops going on so hopefully this will be a nice and relaxing time we'll probably go shopping for some things that i need for my egg retrieval like for example socks because you need to have really nice warm socks for your egg retrieval day and also some salty snacks because apparently it is a thing that for egg retrieval you need to eat a diet rich in sodium in order to be able to expel any excess fluids and have lots and lots of fluids, drink lots of water and lots of electrolytes. So we'll go shopping for some salty snacks and for some, you know, other items. Please guys, keep your fingers crossed for us. Um, thank you so much for joining today's video. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up and then I'll see you guys on my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.